George is here to launch a book on 50 years of popular music, written by former Beatles press officer Derek Taylor. 20 years ago, Australia had never seen anything like it. Teenage hysteria as the Beatles stormed the country. Today's appearance at the Opera House by George Harrison was a far more sedate affair. George didn't want to talk about his time as an idol to millions. But he did give us a profoundly 60s view of the meaning of life. The only thing that is existing is the now. And so now I'm here and the next minute I'll be wherever I am next minute. So. The book, 50 Years Adrift, was edited by George and written by Derek Taylor, who was Beatles press officer while the band was at their peak. Leather bound and gold tipped, it's being published as a limited edition of 2,000 copies. Packed with Beatles memorabilia, it's being snapped up at $375 a copy. The appeal will never fade. George Harrison is in Sydney tonight, having attended a luncheon in the city earlier today to launch his memoirs. The book was written by longtime Beatle associate Derek Taylor, and it's fairly exclusive. Only 2,000 copies were printed, and they sell at $375 each. George Harrison's normally reluctant to talk to media, but Morris Parker managed to get this personal interview. You know, the Beatles is a thing of the past, and that's all. You know, it's like, you know, it's pointless us talking about the Second World War, although they tend to talk about it forever, you know, like they miss it. I think it's better to be here now and live in the present, and uh, that's the only reluctance I have about the Beatles, but generally, it was a happy time and we had fun, but it's over, you know, that's all. You just me mentioned the present then. How does George Harrison see the present right now? The present? Well, the present right now is a, a sort of whitewashed wall in the garage underneath Sydney Opera House with a sun gun on my face. But the present, when I walk out of the car park, will be the sunshine of Sydney and a lot of nice smiling faces and friends, and it's very enjoyable particularly down here because we don't have uh, cruise missiles in our back gardens. You worried about that? Well, uh, I'm not exactly overjoyed with it, you know. But, it, I mean, you have to live up there to feel that because it's sort of like um, people playing cowboys and Indians in your backyard, you know. It has nothing to do with us. It's just two mighty powers just using us as the excuse to uh, practice, you know, warfare. Would you describe yourself as a legend? I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No. In his own lunchtime? A le legend in my own lunchtime, yes. A prefab four. One of the prefab four. There's a, been a lot of things written about the Beatles, a lot of articles, books, yeah. movies, etc. Yeah. How do you look upon that? Well, it's, uh, some of it's good, some of it's bad. You know, it really depends on... I mean, I'm interested in the truth, really. Anything that's honest and truthful uh, even if it's something that I might not like in as much as, you know, if it's something that uh, is, as long as it's the truth, I dislike books and articles and things that are written by people who don't know anything, who, uh, you know, just spread rumours and make out that life wasn't exactly as good as it was. What was the biggest lie ever written about the Beatles? Uh, Would you know that one, Derek, or George? Many. No, no. It's it's, uh, what happens is that once people know everything, they begin to invent, so the thing gets out of, really out of control. Possibly the biggest lie was that every time he went into Apple, there was a man in a frock coat who had had a, had a basin full of pills, and the guests were all allowed to choose whichever stimulant or, or downer they wanted. OK, you've both worked together. Derek, how would you describe George Harrison? We're very dissimilar in some ways. He drives fast cars. I can't... I don't hold a driving licence. He doesn't He's know in the Labour about Party, and Labour I don't Party. like them. He doesn't like politics. Uh, I, I love opera. He can't stand people who make those noises. But, I mean... <laughs> Apart from that, we get on great. We get on great. You're great friends. <laughs> yeah, very well, it takes all kinds to make an interview. But, <laughs> if you don't like opera, what kind of music do you like? I like a lot of music. I like um, my... If I was only allowed one kind of music to listen to, I would have to say it was Indian, North Indian classical music. That is to say, the Ravi Shankars, uh, Ali Akbar Khan, that kind of stuff. If you talk about rock and roll, then rock and roll to me is Little Richard, Chuck Berry, Everly Brothers, Buddy Holly, that stuff. I don't hear music these days, although they call it rock and roll, it's not rock and roll. Or music of Bob Dylan, which has always been my favourite. He said more in one song than the average songwriter said in many lifetimes. That whole Indian influence, does it still affect you? 
Oh, absolutely, yeah. It'll be with me uh, till my dying moments. Okay, then how does George Harrison see the future? The future now is a good cup of tea in the hotel, and, uh, you know, the future is always the now for me. I just um, I hope I can continue to live a little bit longer and uh, come more in touch with the reality that lies within us all.